Okay, we have another presenter as of now. We have Gladys Harold. Over to you, Gladys. You can share your screen. Hello, everyone. Yeah, this is Gladys Harold Jua from Nigeria. I'll be presenting the role of motivation in enhancing staff productivity, a case study of OES and Company Nigeria Limited. Okay, I'll look at the abstract. In this study, how to increase performance and productivity through motivation is of primary interest to OEs and company Nigeria Limited because it's been noticed that motivation is the bedrock of anti-vices, which hinders progression of an organization, it doesn't allow the organization to meet its goals and objectives. A descriptive research method was used to solve the problem that were to, to find solution to the problems. And, it, and different motivational theories and motivation perspective were also used to ensure that issues affecting workers' productivity was determined and also a, result, a, a, a solution preferred. In order to get this, a survey was employed and the use of questionnaire was uh, used to, to gather data. Inferences from these responses were also drawn from what was received from the, from the respondents. A random sampling method was used in selecting the sample size from the population of staff in OES and Company Nigeria Limited. The obstacles that were affecting motivation were established. These obstacles were analyzed. A long-term and short-term strategies for achieving them were preferred. Three hypotheses were stated, were formulated, and the conclusion was drawn from these stated hypotheses. The analysis of data obtained from the, from the questionnaire was, uh, was analyzed using the statistical package for social sciences to get the piercing product moment coefficient, co correlation coefficient, while the chi-square method was used to analyze the hypotheses that were stated. Find, the findings that were carried out were based on the outcome of the, of the data collected. And from the findings, we could see there was a low productivity of uh, staff in, uh, in OEs and company Nigeria Limited. This is not due to the fact that they are not willing to work harder. They want to work, but due to several management functions that are affecting, they are putting in, more, putting in their best in ensuring the organization grows. Recommendation and conclusion were drawn from the data that were analyzed. The key words there were motivation, productivity, the questionnaire, random sampling, and then performance. Now we go to the introduction proper. The term motivation is obtained from the word move, which means to move, is a Latin word. Okay, and it's, it starts, the, this process is a process that starts with this physiological and psychological deficiency, which in which needs to be to be, which needs to be activated so that the aim of the organization can be achieved. The role of motivation cannot be overemphasized over because it comes into play in every aspect of our life, in every aspect of an organization's life, okay? And it has to do, and we cannot do without the staff, which are the subjects of productivity. So like Ed Zilio also supported this when he said, organization is a purposeful creation of man and it's designed to achieve certain purposes. So we know that the organization cannot do without the people. It's the people that help the organization to achieve its aims and objectives. And in doing this, the, the organization needs to help the, the, the people, the staff, the employees to also strive towards achieving their personal aspiration in the course of doing the work. The effective motivation of human resources has been of interest to management practitioners, to to administrators and to a lot of scholars. And, and it said that the human component is the central, most important act, most important, because everything that is done depends on them. It's how well we do it depends on how the organization either swims or it sinks. So it's the duty of the manager to ensure to build a solid management practice that can help the, the staff, the employees to be motivated. They are failing to do this to create a motivated workforce a demotivated, demotivated workforce. Motivation, motivation is described as behavior. So it's the behavior of the people that determine how well they perform their tasks. If you don't motivate the employees to do more, 
if you don't help them to, 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 so if you don't, if you're not consistent in helping, motivating the employees, then you might find out you have a problem in influencing that, them to do work, to increase productivity. Motivation is also a management function. And is the management, it's on your lines on the management to ensure they motivate the, or the, uh, the employees. Because the more you, you, you motivate them, the more you also increase productivity. Because most of the things that bring the, the people to the organization is a place where they can feel loved, where they want to do the work, and they are motivated in doing it. So we look at productivity on the other hand. Productivity should be the concern of every staff because productivity, if, there's no pro, if the, the organization is not progressing, the organization definitely will, will, will come to its end in the closest, shortest time. So the challenge of every organization is to increase productivity. And why we're doing is we look at the human efforts that is at work. We know that when there is productivity, the standard of living will also increase. The organization will also grow. So it is very critical to recognize motivation in doing all this because this is the basis for this study. Motivation, how to increase productivity and also how to increase performance. There are different classification of motivation theories. We look at the content theories of motivation by Abraham Maslow and by Frederick Eberg. Abraham Maslow is the chief protagonist of motivation and is the first to use employees' needs in motivating theory. He had three structures. He arranged motivation in hierarchical order, okay, in five different hierarchical order. He looked at motivation in physiological needs. That is the needs, the need for individual to live, the need for water, for shelter, and also the need for clothing. And he also looked at motivation in terms of safety needs, that you need to satisfy the safety needs of employees because there should be the fear of losing the job is there, the danger is there, so we need to satisfy that. Then he looked at motivation, the social aspect of motivation, that everybody tried to satisfy their uh, to satisfy their need through friendship, through interacting with others. Then he also looked at motivation in terms of esteem. Every individual have their esteem and they expect respect from others and also from people around them. Lastly, look at let motivation in terms of self actualization. Okay, this is the last and the highest level of motivation. Every other motivation, every other need comes, comes before this self actualization needs. Then we look at Frederick Herbert, the two factor theory of motivation. Okay, based motivation in terms of satisfaction and dissatisfaction. He looked at the satisfier. The satisfiers are those needs that the individual feels has to be satisfied. And once these needs are below level, it tends to become dissatisfaction. So at every time, in every point in time, organizations should look at lifting the needs, the motivating individual, motivating their staff so that it doesn't lead to dissatisfaction. Then we look at the process theories of motivation. This concentrates on how motivation occurs and how the behavior is directed, initiated, and sustained. Okay, so we're looking at Victor Vroom's expectancy theory. Victor Vroom looks at his expectancy theory as, as individual expects preferred outcome and the strength of attractiveness of that outcome. So it looks like individuals have their, their needs so we need to drive that. There's a need to drive that need. And when that need is driven, they tend to do more and they tend to want to go further to ensure the organization succeeds and that the, the activities of the organization is uh, moving in the right direction. So he looked at, for, for, and he looked at three major functions in doing this. He looked at, a, there's a strong desire to attain a goal. And also, he also looked at, one should work hard to accomplish this goal and, and should also have things that will influence the productivity level. It could be done through motivation. Then the, uh, secondly is the goal theory. Individual goals determine their behavior. Every individual has a goal, the reason why they are, they are behaving the way they are behaving. So uh, organizations should be able to identify this goal. And when you look at the behavior, you know, okay, this individual is behaving in a particular manner. You should find a way to ensure you repeat a behavior that rewards them. Because when you reward the individual, they tend to behave better. The third, the third classification of motivation is the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. The individual, the intrinsic motivation is, is inherent in every individual. 
So the most individuals that are intrinsically motivated, they look at they look at the work in terms of fun rather than from the reward or external pleasure. They want to do the work because they are they, they are happy doing it. Then we also look at the extricit, the extricit motivation. This involves a particular reason they are doing the job. They are doing it out of fear and not just for pleasure. They want to keep their job. They have the fear of losing the job is making them to do the job. So management managers should look at all this and see how well to use it to the favor of organization increasing productivity. Now we'll look at strategies for motivating organization members. There are various strategies that can be used to, to motivate organization members. One of these strategies are managerial, managerial communication. There should be communication should be effective. There should be communication. But when, the, when the employees feel they are communicated to, they tend to work harder because they feel valued. Now we should look at behavior mod modification. Modif in behavior modification, we should ensure, uh, uh, um, managers should ensure that they look at how the, uh, how the members of the organization are behaving. How are they behaving? Are they behaving towards the good of the organization? And when you see this, you use enforcement, you use motivation to ensure they behave better. Then the last is job design. Most, most employees might feel stagnant in a job they are doing and they want to do more. So we could look at job rotation, job shadowing and also job enlargement. These will help, these are the th some of the strategies in motivating, motivating employees to work more. The statement of the problem, there are different state problems that have been identified in OEs and Company Nigeria Limited. And in an attempt to solve this, some of the questions were, that were asked were, why is there low morale of work? Why is there low morale to work in OEs and, and company Nigeria Limited? What is the state of productivity in the organization? What is the level of motivation in the workers? What incentive skills are available to workers? What could be done to elicit high, mo high morale and increase staff productivity? Then lastly, as the level of motivation and available incentive skill impacted on productivity in the organization, so these are the problems that we need, intend to, to, to identify and address in this research. Then the objective of the study, one of the objective, some of the objectives that were stated in this study is the, to evaluate the effective dynamics of work motivation and job satisfaction of employees towards achieving organizational goals. To examine the extent in which the needs of the staff is satisfied, which invariably will increase the organization performance to analyze the problems that affect the climate of the organization, increasing workers' productivity. Then uh, three hypotheses were stated in this study. And, one of, and the first hypothesis is higher monetary incentive to worker will lead to increase in organization productivity. The second hypothesis is the extent to which an organization succeeds in satisfying the needs of the staff will determine the degree in which the goals of the organization are realized. Thirdly, productivity of workers will either we decline when the climate in the organization is hostile than when it is friendly. The method that we use, okay, it, in uh, OEs and company, we have 450 staff in, in five different divisions. And to be able to get this, we had to, uh, an unbiased sampling was used, that the random sampling was used. And it was used to select 11, uh, to select 100 employees from the population of 450. Uh, though out of these 100 employees, 90 of them resp responded and submitted their feedback. And this was what constituted the sample size of the study. The, the data was collected. The major and the primary instrument that was used for data collection is the questionnaire. And it was shared to the selected staff. This questionnaire was, the, the questionnaire was structured were structured questions in English. They were straightforward. They were simple and easy to understand. And it consists of 23 multiple choice questions. And it was designed along Linkett's 1966 five point scale model. So we have from number one strongly disagree to number five strongly agree. The data that were collected were analyzed using the statistical package for social sciences to get the PSC moment square moment correlation coefficient, why the chi-square method was used to analyze the hypotheses that were stated, results and discussion. Okay. Inferential statistics was also used to collect data from the respondent. Okay. Out of the 23 questions, eight questions were picked 
were selected because they have direct effect on the study, that's product, uh, motivation and productivity. These data, were, 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 they were analyzed, coded, and using the IBM SPSS. Descriptive statistics was also used to get the demography, demograph, the demography of the of the respondent were also were, were obtained, and then the mean mean and standard deviation was used to get the descriptive statistics, because in there we have eight numbers based on the questions that were picked. Analysis of Nova was used to test the significant difference. Why correlation? Why the correlation showed the degree and direction of the relationship between motivation? The motivation is denoted as X. And, pro and the star productivity denoted as Y, to know if it is negatively or positively correlated. The hypotheses were tested using the chi-square method, like I mentioned earlier, to measure, to measure the relationship between the dependent and the independent variables. A decision rule was also set. At 5% level of, signif of 5% significant level, we accept the null hypothesis. That is, if the calculated value is less than the tabulated value. Otherwise, the null hypothesis is rejected if the calculated value is greater than the table value. This is the correlation that was done for the analysis that was obtained. And at 0 0.01 significant level, that's using the two-tail method, we can see, we will be able to see the correlation of the X and the Y dependent variable. The coefficient was also carried out. And from the above, it can be seen that there's correlation between motivation and staff productivity because it supported the, 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 the study. Then I will see that correlation is one, which means there's high correlation between motivation and productivity. And this correlation is very strong. So it shows that the more workers are motivated, the more productivity will also increase. So if markers are not motivated, productivity will definitely increase. But in this instance, the studies show that workers, the more workers are motivated, the higher their productivity will be in terms. The, for testing of the hypothesis, the chi-square method was used, and the formula for testing it is, state, is, is stated above, is stated in this study. Okay, the Mojeku 2012 method was used. So from this, you will see that the observed value is observed frequency is denoted as 0, 01, 0 i. E i is expected frequency. Then O n is the number of observed frequency that occurred, and E n is the number of expected frequency. And when this test was, when this was, the formula was used to test, to, when the formula was calculated based on the data that was collated. We can see everything we have in the three hypotheses supported it. So that means the higher monetary incentive to workers will lead to increase in organization productivity. This was supported, but the null hypothesis were accepted. Then the extent to which an organization succeeds in satisfying the needs of its staff will determine the degree in which the goals of the organization are realized. Then the productivity of workers will decline when the climate in the organization is hostile than when it is friendly. This was supported. And this was achieved because when the calculated value was, was checked against the statistical value, we can see that the table value was less than the calculated value. Hence, there was a need to accept the alternative hypothesis. Why the null hypothesis for the stated, hypo for the, for the stated hypothesis were rejected. So based on the statistical test that was carried out on the first hypothesis, it can, we, we can see the higher monetary incentive is a major determinant in increasing of productivity. Taylor 1911 supported this when he said, the more incentives you give to workers, the more they tend to work harder, and this will invariably increase their productivity. The second hypothesis, we stated that the extent to which an organization succeeds in satisfying the needs of its staff determines the degree in which the goals of the organizations are realized. It is clear that the needs and aspiration of workers are far from being met if we look at from what the data collected. So it's validated in this hypothesis that the more you satisfy the needs of the workers, the more they go extra mile in ensuring that the, the goals of the organizations are achieved. Then for the third, at, at the third workers in which the employees work, it has an impact on productivity. The environment and the organization climate can either be a motivator or a demotivator. So if you have an unfriendly environment, 
it can decrease the, the, the productivity of the workers. So it's always important for managers to watch out for this and build a friendly environment that will promote respect, that also promotes, promotes that will make workers to work harder and that can also make employees to feel valued. Significance of this study. In this study, it's very important that management Manage, the management ensure employees feel loyal, they feel appreciated, they are needed, and they feel they are part of the, of the company. So motivation will lead to staff stability as this promotes organization, organizational image. There also be cordial relationship between employees and the management because this helps them, in, this helps in developing and ensuring that motivation stays in the organization. And then this study will also contribute to growing knowledge of motivation because there are so many theories of motivation this study will help in increasing increasing the, uh, the uh, knowledge in spreading each in in enlightening orders on what motivation is and also notice the problem and the errors association with motivation and help in preferring solution to these problems so these are the references that were used for these studies and uh, the, that the journals the books and and um, the journals, the books, and where uh, most of the references came from. Then in conclusion, in this study, the investigation has revealed that there's low productivity, low morale of workers. This is not because they are not eager to work. It's not about that. It is traceable to the poor condition of service, lack of career advancement, poor worker management relation, poor salary, hostile environment, and poor incentive scheme. So it is the responsibility of management to address these issues. And to, since it's been identified, they should address the issue so that it will have a positive and realistic impact on the morale of workers. And it also aid in, in re increasing productivity. Because when, you, when morale of staff is low, or when, the, when there's a low morale of workforce, it can affect other employees. It can cause deviance. So management must not ignore this. Because it can have a devastating effect on, on the growth and productivity of the organization. Management needs to also understand that, uh, that uh, organizational members come to the organization with their needs and aspirations. And they bring this ensure they bring it to organization. And in the process of helping the organization to grow, they also they also expect that their needs and, uh, and aspirations are also met. And this can be this can be achieved through careful study of the workers. You have to look, also look at the micro and, and micro and the macroeconomic trends. You, look, you have to align the condition of service and welfare packages to the trend in the economy. If there's inflation, if there's problem in the economy, organizations need to look at this and try to align this with what the workers, the take home of take home of workers. Management should also be aware that management style influence the influence motivation because because organization members if they don't like a manager if they don't appreciate the way the manager helps them in growing it can affect them the morale and it also affect productivity but they won't put in their best a well structured organizational organigram and policy should be put in place towards career development there should be advancement there should be ways to rise to top management position and when management feels this is in place, the rate of turnover will increase, will reduce, and the staff will be confident in the system. A conducive and stable organizational climate should also be built and be encouraged. And this will make this will help mani, mani, this will help mem, uh, employees in, in being involved in decision make, makings, okay, on things that affect their welfare and the organization. Future step of this study. The sources of management for the next century should include theoretical, theoretical and practical education and trainings on the different types of motivation, the sources and effects it has on performance and exposure to various influences. Individual experience of, mot of mot that motivate employees should be understood and should be obtained for better understanding as this will influence motivation and should be taken seriously so that it doesn't have adverse effects on productivity. Future study will help in understanding the reasons, in understanding the reason employees are more flexible and open in workplace, in workplace. And this will aid management to motivate employees and induce them to perform and in, perform optimally, thereby increasing productivity.
Thank you. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you for your wonderful presentation.